Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm here to do my January 2018 book haul. <laughs> I spoke in December about how I figured I'd be doing fewer book hauls in 2018, but I like them so much that I don't want to stop doing one a month. <laughs> I am hoping that I will uh, cool it a bit on uh, book purchasing and uh, focus on uh, library hauls. And uh, I do have a bit of a library haul, which uh, will also give a bit of a tease into my February TBR. But I do also have three books that I bought. <laughs> so <laughs> the first book that I bought this month was Beneath the Haunting Sea by Joanna Ruth Meyer, which I just finished on the train ride home today. So purchase validated. <laughs> This is a YA epic fantasy novel about a young girl who is um, exiled from her homeland by a bitter rival and she goes across the sea and uh, it turns into this mythological quest where she and her mother hear these voices on the waves and she has to sort of discover her destiny. There's a lot of uh, world building and mythology and um, some people uh, apparently have been comparing it to the Cimmerillion. Uh, like um, uh, the author Joanna Ruth Meyer talks about an editor telling her this seems like Cimmerillion fan fiction and I think her Kirkus Review uh, called it like the Cimmerillion or on Love Letter to Tolkien or, or stuff like that and uh, that's definitely some of the strongest stuff in here. There are some uh, weaknesses that go with some of the YA cliches I think but I, I mean I'm not going to get too into it I guess. <laughs> this is a whole. <laughs> the main reason I bought this is because um, I knew Joanna Ruth Meyer from um, from the NaNoWriMo Vidler community of several years back and that was when she was drafting this novel and other novels and uh, was so dedicated to her craft and it was really fun actually reading this and uh, remembering some of uh, the stuff that she talked about, uh, little hints that she dropped when this was a much uh, rougher draft uh, called The Whale in the Tree. And she even um, mentions the NaNoWriMo Vidler community in her acknowledgments, which is really cool. I don't think she had me in mind specifically. I think we only talked a little bit through our videos, not very much, but still feels pretty cool to be part of a community uh, that inspired this book in any small way. <laughs> this next book is a short story anthology called Beach Life. It's put out by the small press, Cat and Mouse Press, and also uh, with the help of a bookstore in Rehoboth Beach, uh, Maryland, because all of the stories in this annual anthology are on the theme of um, beach reads in the community of Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. And uh, I actually um, took a mini writing course with um, the editor of the uh, press that puts this annual anthology together and she was talking about how to get accepted into short story anthologies and uh, made me very curious about this uh, particular anthology also because I um, have history and love Rehoboth Beach and I'm very curious about the types of uh, stories that are published in this and maybe I will try to write one myself so, you know, I write short stories and one of the main goals with that usually is to get published in small anthologies or literary magazines. So um, I do try every year to pick up two new magazines from the large pile of them <laughs> in this country alone, let alone the world. <laughs> and my goal is to, um, to read and uh, publicize them on booktube. So I am hoping to get to this uh, next month. And also to this literary magazine, which is uh, local to Maryland. It's called Free State Review. And uh, I actually had a very nice uh, email from uh, the editor when he rejected <laughs> my short story, Quarter Life. <laughs> you know, when you uh, put your story out to so many places, most of what you get is, you know, the form rejections. And uh, the best thing other than an acceptance really is a detailed and uh, excited rejection that says, you know, it was so great in all of these ways or here, I would love to talk to you about it, but it just doesn't fit right now, but that it's so personal, you know, like that. So I also figured I'd want to pick up this uh, literary journal and see what it's all about. From here, I'll move on to the uh, library books, which I'm intending to make a big part of my reading in February. This one is called Young Jane Young by Gabrielle Zevin, and it's part of my Jewish fiction published in 2017 list that I want to read this year. This story is billed as a retelling of the Monica Lewinsky case. Really, it's uh, sort of a uh, look at uh, 
the way that that scandal was handled in the media and the uh, impact that it had on a young woman like Monica. But in this story, it is another young woman called Aviva Grossman. And I assume some other things are different in here, too. I think there's also some... Um, experimental writing um, in this story, maybe a little bit of vignette style um, going through different POV characters and different styles. And it goes throughout the years starting about when the scandal hit and then going uh, later throughout history about how it affects various people. I heard the author speak actually at East City Books in DC and uh, her focus very much was on sort of the sexism inherent in these scandals about uh, how easy it is to uh, blame the women and, uh, you know, the men just don't get the backlash and the slut-shaming that uh, the women get. And, uh, of course, there is uh, some Jewish content in this book because uh, Aviva Grossman <laughs> is a uh, Jewish character and um, it's one of those not central to the plot things, I think, but it'll be a cultural aspect and that will certainly be of extra interest to me as well. So I'm excited to finally get to reading this. The next two books I'm going to talk about I'm really excited about, even though I'm uh, only going to end up reading one of them, I think, <laughs> because um, this is going to be my take on uh, the infamous page 112 tag, which if you haven't heard about it, I guess you're not subscribed to Sean the Book Maniac or Steve Donahue, and you should be. It was a tag that uh, Sean the Book Maniac started based on a uh, French literary prize where the judges got page 112 of various books that were up for the prize and they comprised the shortlist solely by reading page 112. And so Sean the Book Maniac basically started this as a way to do some critical reading, like uh, page 112 in a novel is supposed to be far enough along into it that it's not as uh, shiny anymore and not as, you know, poured over by editors and you get like the real writing. <laughs> and. Uh, and I think the way most people do this tag is uh, that they pick three books and they already know what the books are, but they read page 112 anyway and and read it critically and discuss which one uh, works the best for them. Um, there's a more honest way, I guess, of doing this tag where people email each other uh, page 112s and, and the person reading them doesn't know what the books are, which is more fair. And, but I'm going off like on my own tangent here, my own thing, because... Uh, I, I thought this sounded really cool, but I thought I'd want to um, adapt it to my own needs. And some of my own needs are that uh, my Goodreads TBR scares me. <laughs> so I thought maybe I could just pit two books at a time against each other, two books of similar subject matter, and uh, decide on the page 112 tag which one I was going to read next. So that's my goal starting in February with these two books of uh, contemporary Jewish themed fiction. <laughs> The first one is Far To Go by Alison Pick, and the second one is All I Love and Know by Judith Frank, and that's all I'll tell you about either of these books. I uh, put them on my Goodreads TBR a few years ago, so they're a little more hazy to me too, and I figure I'll try to uh, judge as uh, much as I can just based on that page 112, and I hope to include that in uh, one of my upcoming videos. <laughs> kind of excited. I, I mean, I've seen other people do this tag tag <laughs> so many times and it's it just seems like a really fun way to hone your critical reading skills so we'll see what I make of it <laughs> and then booktube is my guide yet again with this next book this is shelter by Jung Yoon um, this is the fiction book that uh, won the Reading Women Podcast Award in 2016. Uh, last week I uh, listened to the nonfiction winner, and so I thought I'd next listen to or read the fiction winner, and maybe I'll even do some sort of a mini review of both books and uh, thought that would be kind of fun and maybe of interest because um, one of the hosts of uh, the Reading Women Podcast is Kendra Winchester, who is... Uh, known here on booktube for her uh, literary lady taste and so forth and so I um, have been very intrigued by what she and Autumn talk about on their podcast and what she talks about alone on her booktube channel and uh, I'll read from the flap this book sounds uh, rather intriguing to me. Kyung Cho is a young father burdened by a house he can't afford. For years he and his wife Jillian have lived beyond their means. Now their debts and bad decisions are catching up with them, and Kyung is anxious for his family's future. A few miles away, his parents, Jin and Mei, live in the town's most exclusive neighborhood, surrounded by the material comforts that Kyung desires for his wife and son. 
As a child, he had every possible advantage, private tutors, expensive hobbies, but his parents never showed him kindness. Kyun can hardly bear to see them now, much less ask for their help. Yet when an act of violence it leaves Jin and Mei unable to live on their own, the dynamic suddenly changes, and he's compelled to take them in. For the first time in years, the Cho's find themselves living under the same roof. Tensions quickly mount as Kyung's proximity to his parents forces old feelings of guilt and anger to the surface, along with a terrible and persistent question. How can he ever be a good husband, father, and son when he never knew affection as a child? And it goes on from there, but, uh, you know, the family drama is real and I am in. <laughs> Very excited. And finally, while I don't have them here yet, but they are collecting on uh, library hold shelves, uh, I have this, um, I have another February reading goal, because <laughs> I don't have enough of those, where I want to finish all of uh, the Virginia Woolf novels that I haven't read yet, which is about five of them. <laughs> Uh, last year in February, I finished all of the Bronte novels that I hadn't read yet, so I thought, why not uh, continue in that vein? <laughs> and I'm excited and a little nervous, but at least I don't have to read The Waves. I've read that already, so I don't have to add that craziness to the list. Uh, that was that was uh, a challenge to get through. I'm hoping uh, her other novels uh, will be less challenging. You know, not easy, but <laughs> not quite so, so arduous. <laughs> That about covers it for me now. You know, we're finishing out January here, and I read 10 books, which uh, makes me very excited. It's a high number for me personally. And uh, I have 10 more books on my TBR for uh, February. I mean, technically, I guess a bit more than 10, because I'm not actually counting the literary uh, journals as part of that. <laughs> and I'm not actually sure I can get to all of that. That might be a bit more than I can chew, especially since uh, this is the uh, shortest month of the year. But uh, hey, we can aim high, and uh, hopefully making these videos will make it easier for me to uh, meet the goals. I do think that helped me a lot uh, in January to uh, get through books uh, quickly, and yet also... Uh, also critically and insightfully, I hope. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, you know, that's always the balance we want is, uh, you know, there's so much to read that we want to get to, uh, but uh, I obviously don't want to sacrifice uh, being thoughtful about my reading. So <laughs> I, I think I did that this month and we'll see what happens next month. So uh, I can't believe we're already uh, through the first month of 2018. <laughs> you know cliche statement, but I will be back next month, and uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.